66. Yes, precious. A very, very important year and a very important milestone, rather, on my channel. I have 1066 subscribers, and I think I almost got as excited as that as I did with 1,000. Because, of course, 1066, oh my gosh. Yes, this is something that I really love talking about, and I have a little bit of a background in, not a complete expert. So if there are anyone, if there is anyone rather in the chat that wants to chime in with any of these facts, please let me know. But this is this is kind of a a big part of things I was exposed to as a kid. I never actually got to visit the battlefield. My uh, folks did, but my dad used to tell us stories. There was also the Bayou Tapestry that I did see. Oh my gosh, and I'm going to talk about that as well. So that was kind of a part of it. And look who is in the chat. It is the Shield Wall of Dragons. We're here to talk everything 1066. I wanted to go ahead and do this stream too because I'm like, oh my gosh, what happens if I gain a sub or lose a sub? Then I will no longer be 1066. I had actually lost one and gained one, so now I'm back. So here we go. Let's do this. Everything you ever wanted to know or didn't want to know. The original Game of Thrones. You can see where Martin gets a lot of his inspiration from. He's not hidden it. It's not a secret. Things like the War of the Roses. But also House of the Dragon. Shades of that in this here. Hello, it is Taylor Swift, Greater Disney Star Wars in MCU. Well, that's not really that hard to do now, is it? Precious. It is Charlie Stevenson. Hello, everyone. We're here to talk 1066. You bald OT. Hello. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the rose. Yes, we are celebrating 1066 subscribers and that very, very intense and special year. True story. The Halley's Comet appeared in the sky right when all this stuff was going down. And people were like, Dude, remember we didn't have great astronomers back then, and they saw this as many different kinds of signs. William the Conqueror, who we're going to learn about, he took it as a sign that God was on his side. If one is of an astrical, astrological kind of person, people that believe that things that happen in the sky signify big deals, well, this was definitely a big deal. It totally shifted everything. For England, And as we know, England then shaped uh, the rest of a lot of the world, including our world over here in the United States. Well, let's get going. Let's talk a little bit about 1066. I have a bit of a slideshow and we will be dipping over into Wikipedia every now and then because mostly it's got some good stuff. The year was 1066. It sucked to be everybody, including the king, apparently. But. Over in England, dude, here we are. I like to get us oriented or the orientated. More specifically, this circle here is going to play a role. You're going to have Harold here in England. You're going to have William the Conqueror of Normandy, the Duke of Normandy here. And then you're going to have. Harold, Haralda, I hope I said that right. I know I didn't because it's Norwegian, and I will always mispronounce it. Those are going to be contenders for the throne. There were a few others, but these were the most significant. They were the ones that actually fought a battle over it. The little mark there is where the Battle of Hastings occurred. Hello, everyone coming in. Please like, share, and subscribe. We're going to talk about 1066 and 1066 subscribers. Yay! Ah! Zooming in a little bit. You can see that the Battle of Hastings happened in the little town of Hastings, which is south east of London. Does it zoom in a little closer? Because where William crossed, he crossed... At a place I've never even uh, heard of. It's like Dies or something, sur mer. Again, I will be mispronouncing French and Norwegian. Warning. Look, it's right 
there, if you look on the map, the Hastings Battlefield, the English Heritage 1066 for the Battle of Hastings. So if you do want to go and see the battlefield, it's very well preserved. They've got lots of cool history, and I would highly recommend it. Even though I haven't been, I will go the next time I go to England. I promise you, because I want to see this battlefield. Shield Wall of Dragons also didn't everyone involved have at least a tangential, legitimate claim to the throne. Yes. Some more than others. We're going to go into that because Harold actually didn't really have a claim. He was not blood at all to Edward the Confessor, King Edward. He was the brother-in-law. William the Conqueror was the second cousin once removed or first cousin twice removed of Edward. Harold didn't really have, I mean, sorry, Harald, Haralba, Haralda didn't have any real blood claim to Edward, but because the Vikings had kind of had a kingdom there for a bit. That's where his kind of thing came from. The closest blood relative to Edward the Confessor was actually his great nephew. He had a claim, but the closest blood claim, rather. But however, they were all like, well, he's too young and no one wants him anyways. Absolute male primogenitor wasn't a thing at this time. We're going to go into that. We can see why, though, it probably is a good idea to do so, maybe. <laughs> and then we don't have these issues, especially if you have a monarchy. Well, look who it is. It is Rennie. It is Rennie. Thank you for being here. Yay, we have 1066 subscribers and the year 1066. Hello, it is woof, 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 Miss Martin. And everyone says, Hound 3000. We love our animals here at Miss Martin Muses. Hello, good morning, Miss Martin Muses. We're back at battles, LOL. Yes, I, I was feeling a little badly because I should have been focusing on Shiloh today, though I might do it tomorrow. It depends on our D&D &D schedule. But I was so afraid that I was going to either gain or lose a sub. I was like, I got to get this 1066 thing going. Because it, it, it's, it's important. It is important. Seven miles from Hastings, says Ubaldo T. From Hastings named Village of Battle. Ah. I will bow down to you for that. Let, let me see. There was also a church or a monastery built there, I think. And there's a whole other story about it, but 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 that's what uh, we have. Ah, cool. I understand. I'd like to hear about more of this one. Great choice. Yes, it it is so cool. And my gosh, if you ever want go to go to see the Bayou Tapestry, the good news about the Bayou Tapestry over there in Bayou is that that's right next to the uh, beach, uh, Omaha Beach. So if you want to go visit the battle at Normandy, the battle the beaches and where the U S landed, that's the closest town. So you can, you stay there to see Normandy, the beaches, and then you can go to see this by you tapestry. All right. So let's, let's, let's dig into the history. Oh, they were so digging into this when I was there last, the last time I was in Bayou was 15, 15, 16. Yes. Back in 15, 16. 2016 game of thrones for the they were, they were advertising the bayou tapestry this was along a wall as you can see in french la tapestry de bayou but they put it in english for all of us normies and then in french for real the jeu de thrones which i know i am probably butchering because i think that those mean things in french these were my pictures Yes, a lot of history. Correct. I'm going to say Edward. I know in French it's Edouard. I threw something to that effect. Edward the Confessor. He is actually a saint. St. Saint Edward the Confessor. He's not 
a confessor, as in a priest or anything to that effect, but a name confessor was sometimes given to canonized people that were not martyrs. Whole other story about his canonization and like, but he he was a pious dude. Sometimes people have said that's why he didn't have children. I have opinions on that. That had nothing to do with his piety. But it makes a good story. Because as king, it was his duty to, <laughs> if you know what I mean, make little kings. So, so these are the th uh, three big guys. So you have Edward, Harold. He was king of England for 200 days about, give or take. And William. But French people call him Guillaume, I think is how you pronounce it correctly. Forgive me, everyone from France. Tapestry, says Dadman Walking 55. I think of any in the last crusades. Yes, please hit that like button. <laughs> <laughs> down 3,000. Maybe he likes to confess things. Well, yes, he did, but not for that reason. William had a reputation for being very pious and by all accounts was faithful to his wife. And leading up to all this, he and his wife would sit around and pray and fast. And when they made a ton of babies, nine that lived, they founded two great monasteries. One of their daughters became a nun. They, before he went on his deal, William, he got the blessing of the Pope before his dad died making a pilgrimage to the Holy Land. He got a fever. So, but interestingly, he is actually a bastard. Yes, he is precious. He is a bastard. He, his nickname was William the Bastard, especially people that didn't like him. His father was not married to his mother. His mother was the daughter of a tanner, common woman. And before he went off to his pilgrimage to the Holy Land, he declared William his successor. And, and, and we're going to see this, that this was a thing. It wasn't necessarily automatic primogenitor, let alone male. This whole idea that you would name your successor was more accepted. And if anyone had an issue, you could fight for it. William did have to end up fighting for it. He spent a good deal of his childhood running away from would-be assassins. Uh, people that wanted to take the Duchy of Normandy from him. He was a kid, so he was under protection. Oh, speaking of the Bayou Tapestry, look at that bad boy. First of all, it's just huge. Huge and old, 11th century. The reason why it looks like this is they have to make it really dark and have like special lights. Obviously, you are not allowed to take any pictures in there. And you kind of move along. It's hundreds and hundreds of feet. It's one of the most impressive things I've ever seen. And it tells a story. From William's point of view, it being Normandy and him winning, but really tells the story of the Battle of Hastings in a cool way. When you go there... They give you a little headset in your own language so you can follow along with the story. And, you know, they ask that you kind of keep it moving. But it's really, really, really fun. More and more Game of Thrones like, yes. Well, and that's what makes Game of Thrones fun. It is, in many ways, this kind of story, but with dragons. Must have taken months to hear that tasty. I mean, I, uh, I, I should know more about uh, this. A comic trip, yes. More than uh, over a, well over a year, uh, maybe even more. And like I said, and the, the vibrancy of the colors, uh, it was, it's, it's really cool. So please, everyone go there. Everyone should go see the 
the beach is at Normandy. This is in the, the same nearest town. So go see it. All right, let's check this party out. Some of this will be told with the Bayeux Tapestry. Some of it will not. Now, this is Harold. Way, way back, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, when we had Edward the Confessor. I've said before, he was childless. No kitties. The pious story is he and his wife, you know, took a vow of celibacy. They lived... Uh, I forget what the kind of marriage it's called. Technically could still be a thing, but hmm. it was sometimes done for piety, pious reasons. The same way that people maybe as they got closer to death would join a nunnery or something. But more likely it is they just, one of them wasn't functioning. There was either blanks going on or other issues because again, Pi uh, Edward being a pious man and a prudent man, it just wouldn't make sense to have that kind of a marriage. That's the kind of luxury that he could have had if he was a third, fifth, sixth son, something to that effect. Often they would enter the church. Uh, but I, I think of him like the way Stannis in Game of Thrones in the Song of Ice and Fire. He wasn't the most thrilled man on earth to do that part of his kingly duties, but it was his duty, so he did it, and did it enthusiastically in the sense of from his vocation. I agree. It's breathtaking to see in person. Yes. Isn't it awesome, Ubaldo? Yes, yes, yes. You got, oh, damn. I want to go see it again. I need to get my buttocks over to France. Hopefully it's not as crazy. So, no kitties. No children. As I've said, his closest blood relative was his great nephew, who was a teenager. His name was Edgar Atheling. Oh, and he was the last Anglo Saxon prince. William. Okay, I, I think it's first cousin twice removed or second cousin once removed. But either way, he was a cousin of Edward the Confessor, quote, through Edward's mother, Emma, who was William's great aunt. So Emma was the cousin of Edward, who was William's great aunt. So that's the closest blood tie that's not a kid. Harold, this dude here as depicted in the Bayou Tapestry, no blood relative, the brother of Edward's wife. And we'll get to uh, Harrell Harada in a second. Now, the way the story goes, Edward realizing there weren't any young, young little Edwards going to be happening, named William his heir. But check this out. He didn't do it officially. He just, he 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 told William, he promised him, you dude, you're going to be the king. I, I, you're going to be my heir. Frankly, this is where people give grief to Edward. He should have been a lot more decisive. So Edward's like, sorry, William's like, dude, I'm going to be the heir. And According to the people that tend to be on the Norman side, Harold, the brother-in-law of Edward, swore fealty to William. Like, yes, you will be the heir. Just like that scene in House of the Dragon at the end of the first episode. That was a thing. People would swear to the heir. And not only did Harold allegedly swear to this fact, he swore at the Bayeux Cathedral over relics. Really hardcore. Some historians say that if this did happen, it could have been under duress, but it's also a little bit convenient. Look who's here. It is sporking. Hello. We have a question of succession. Hello, hello. So this is the story. 
This as shown in the Bayou Tapestry. Remember, that is from William's point of view. So Harold said, yep, you're the heir. Edward said so. I'm even going to put my hands on relics. Speaking of which, there's the Bayou Cathedral. Now, this is not the cathedral that was present at the time. This was built a little bit uh, uh, later, but this is the same site. So this is my picture from the Bayou Cathedral, and boom, here it is. That's where, allegedly, the swearing Harold swore, because this is the oldest part of the cathedral. The crypt, it was present. This was part of the original at the time. The paintings are not contemporary of the time. So if it happened, this is where it occurred. So Harold's like, yeah, dude, you're the heir. Everyone's saying hello to each other. Yes, we love people here on Miss Martin Muses. 1066 subs. Trying to get my figure back. What the hell are you trying to get your... Never mind. I don't even know what that's talking about. Uh, you got a lovely figure. Okay, so here we are. Then a comet. Haley's comet. This is, I think this is so cute. This part of the, the Bayou Tapestry. Look at that comet. And I think that's... Il Mo Isti Morant Stella. Well, I understand Stella. So, 1066 comes around, and a comet is in the sky. So, everyone's like, dude, dude, we now know it's Haley's Comet. Edward dies. Edward the Confessor, St. Edward the Confessor, dies on January 5th. Harold says, on his deathbed... He told me he wanted me to be the king. A lot of people are like, isn't that convenient? Well, regardless, the dudes in England, it had a name. They had a council that approved the king. Let me see. What is it called? It was called... Something that started with a W. That is a very big issue. The Witten, the Wittenagamot. Oops, that's the wrong button. So they said that 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 he's going to be king. So Harold was crowned on January sixth on Epiphany, a very significant date. Meanwhile. William is like, dude, I'm the heir. What the hell? I'm the king. He said I was a king. I've been the heir since 1051, and he's across in Normandy. Now, understand when he was yelling dude and yelling all that, he was yelling that in French. Sacre bleu. I'm French, and I'm... Norman and I'm the heir. Who the hell does Harold think he is? So he starts to build a big ass army. Now he amasses thousands. Let's see, I think it's 15,000, 3,000 horses to get ready to invade. I'm going to take the crown from that M O M M. That, and he said that in French. Yeah, that's where he also got a blessing from the Pope because pious dude and his wife, they were all sitting around praying and stuff. So they felt like we got God on our side. So when this comet appears, they're like, oh yeah, we got you God on our side. Woohoo. And they kept saying like, God help us. That was a thing. And I can't really pronounce that in French, but imagine it sounded like Dieu. Who or what are they pointing at? They're pointing at the comet. Yep. Good morning. Hello, Stephen Ransom from California. Oh, that's a very large army for the time. Yes. Where have we heard this before? House of Dragons. Yes, exactly. Martin, he knows his history and he has admitted it. He has admitted that he has taken some of these from, from history. And again, if you're minding your own business, 
you don't know Haley's Comet comes around all the time, uh, you know, you might think that's significant. And even if you don't, a lot of people believe big things happen when comets appear. Oh, oops, I forgot. This is from the Bayou Tapestry. This was Edward dying. I should have switched it. Because he died before the comet. But here he is dying. And this is where he's going, Harold, you're going to be the king. And Harold's like, oh, well, okay, if you insist. Oh, look at the horses. All right, we're, I'm going to I'm going to switch out of here for a second because we need to find out about Harold, sorry. Harold Haralda, Haralda. I did get the correct pronunciation from Steve last evening, but I still said it wrong. But I was closer than I would have been if I'd have said Harold Haralda, Harold or something to that effect. Shieldwall Dragon says, if you watch the new TV and show, that is a very Game of Thrones-like political maneuvering. Oh, heck yes. Mm -hmm. That's why we love it. Oh, my gosh. Deef, hello. I have a direct ancestor who fought for William the Calicor at the Battle of Hastings. Yay. Did I just hear that January 6th was an important date regarding secession? Oh, dear. I really wish they hadn't ruined. It's epiphany. It's epiphany. I know. I know exactly what you mean. They ruined epiphany. Let me see. Do I have ancestors? Oh, wait a second. I do. I don't know if they actually fought for William the Conqueror, but I have etymological blah, 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 history that my peeps came over to England with the Northern invasion and from Viking blood because you know, that's what they were. Are the animals on the borders of the tapestry just for decoration or do they have a meaning? Uh, no, they're just actually showing all the horses that they had they were showing that they came over with horses i saw a documentary that pointed out oh my gosh the amount of food the amount of horse dung that was created because check this out guess what happened after william was all ready to go and hanging out at that french town i can't pronounce very well it turns out the wind then started blowing against him. The wind started, there was like a low pressure front and it, so the winds were coming from north to southeast. So you literally could not cross the channel under those conditions. They had to wait for two months. It was really bad because they started to say, maybe God's not on our side. But the amount of food and amount of horse crap they had. Oh, my gosh. They it was so awful. They had to put it pack up the crap in horse drawn carriage wagon things and drag them away because not just because of the smell but there became a concern of disease the winds of change yeah mine was a norman knight known as long i'm gonna mispronounce it i'll just say longville probably it's longville he was granted the beddington field estate for services rendered our family motto is aquila non capat muscas which means eagles don't catch flies oh my gosh all right now i'm gonna go over a little bit to wikipedia I would be the biggest liar on the planet if I said I knew quite well about um, Haral Haralda. So that's why I'm going to go here. Let me share. Boom. So meanwhile, Haral Harald Harada. I'm so self-conscious. That's him. Look at him. He has a nice coin. His real name is, I won't pronounce it, but he's called Her Heralda in the sagas because he was considered very stern. 
that was like like the hard ass, the stern guy. It is not easy to translate. In a, a film documentary, I saw it, the this role was played by the guy who played the Blackfish in Game of Thrones, which I think is kind of cool. He is precious. So he was the king of Norway from 1046 to 1066, because guess what? It's not going to end well for him. No Stern for Mr. Stern. But check this out. He had unsuccessfully claimed both the Danish throne and the English, oh, until 1644. So that's how Haral. Now, I do know you do not pronounce the D in, in the language. That's why I'm calling him Haral. And it also helps because then we don't get him confused with Harold. His claim, quote unquote, to the throne was based on an agreement between his predecessor, Magnus the Good, and the earlier King of England. Not Edward the Confessor, but another one previously. So who is Magnus the Good? Better known as. Oh, wait, his real name was Magnus Olafsson, which means Magnus, son of Olaf. And he was king of Norway from 1035 and king of Denmark from 1042 until his death in 1047. And the earlier king of England, Harthnaknut, I know I mispronounced that, sometimes called Kanuta the Third. That's how I know him. I know him as Knut. That's probably wrong as well. He was king of the English from 1040 to 1042. It wasn't always as clear-cut. Look at him. Look at him sitting there being the king. So he said, hey, these two dudes made a deal. So I'm going to be the heir. And I get to be just England, go both England and Norway. So Harold, or Harald, he immediately set about assembling troops and ships for separate invasions. He will sail from Trondheim, which is a city on the west of Norway. So we got two dudes. An invasion from the south, an invasion from the north. Now at this time, Harold was aware of what Harald was doing, but not necessarily William. And hello, everyone that's coming in and that will be watching the uh, replay. I am celebrating 1066 subscribers and talking about the year 1066. Oh, speaking of, oh, hello, gorillas. Hello. Yes, like, as I said, we're celebrating 1066 subscribers and the Battle of Hastings. Now, meanwhile, Harold had a brother named Tostic. And who didn't like his brother? So he he goes off to Her Harada. I'll just call him Harada instead of Haral. I just uh, invaded um, to 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 join in his invasion to kind of stick it to his brother. It's like, well, you know, they they don't like me. They exiled me. They exiled Tostig. It's a long story. So he joins in. So Harada invades England in early September. This is when. William is still going, why, God, why? Or he would say, Farqua, Dieu, or something. So he invades from Trondheim with a fleet of more than 300 ships carrying 15,000 men. And he also had dudes, he also had Tustig's peeps. And they advanced on York. They occupied York at the Battle of Fulford. But, you know, things went south at the Battle of Stamford Bridge. So remember, this is evasion number one. This one sucked. This didn't go well. To make a very long story short, at the Battle of Stamford Bridge, Herol and Tostig were killed. It was a slaughter. And I mean a 
S L A U G H T E R. I hope I said spelt that right because by golly, it was a slaughter. It was so bad that they said while 300 ships came from Trondheim, 27 ships turned back with the survivors. It was bad. So that's the end of Haral Harada and his entrusted Harold's brother. So Harold's like, yay, I'm cool. We got rid of that dude. And then they're like, wait a second. This William, he's got this big thing and he's invading. Because meanwhile, the wind's changed. William wakes up and is like, God is with us. So off they go with their three thousand, their, their big ass cavalry. I mean, their cavalry was amazing and had like all these awesome techniques. So he goes and he, they cross the channel. Let me see. I got a picture here. We're going to go back to the tapestry. And you see, as they're landing, look, they got they got all their horses and things. Now these little birds on the bottom, I think they mean something. I don't know what they mean. Maybe that's what you were talking about. I may have culpa if I was wrong on that. So look, they're like, look at us invading. Isn't this cute? Look at the little horses. You see the horses are in there as well. With the <laughs> with the Normans and their hair and all that. Now the reason why their hair was all short, it wasn't because a vanity, it was a practical thing about their helmets, I've heard, that that's why you'll see them with those kind of shaved heads. Whoops, lots of cool people here. Why, yes! Yes, awesome. Yes, we love people. And we love 1066 here. So, off they go, and they land. William sets up in Hastings. Here we go. So, he went from Caen to Deves to Saint Val, Saint, I'll say Saint Valerie, though. Forgive me, every French person on Earth. Sur son and crosses to Hastings. William is the red one. Blue is Harold. So Harold's up here. Yay! We beat the bad guys, and it's like, oh, damn. So not only had he had to go up with his troops and take care of the soldiers here, he had to then march down all the way through London uh, to meet William. It could have been that if Harold hadn't had Haralda to deal with, it, it might have had a different outcome because they were tired. They had had a march before they'd done it, and they they did rest a little bit, but they they did move. Some historians have said he he might have been able to wait, and could have even maybe gotten some fresh volunteers or something. But regardless, he goes all the way from the Sanford Bridges outside of York all the way down through London to meet William at. Hastings. Now, this is going to be a badass battle. Not my pick. I wish it was. One of these days, I will go visit here. The Battle of Hastings. You can still go and see it. The battlefield at Hastings. I think it's at my last picture. Oh, no, it's not. Spoiler alert. William wins. Okay. Now, this battle is considered probably the most decisive battle up until like World War II as far as impact on the world. Because not only is William winning the crown and winning this battle and killing Harold going to change the, the English throne, it's also going to replace a lot of things in England because once William wins, he's going to re replace the, the nobles, bring in the Normans and all of that. 
bring in Norman customs, Norman rule, some of which are good, many of which are good. Just, to, I guess, if you were more of a Saxon, you weren't too thrilled about it. So there were five castles in England at this time. He will build as many as 500. That's why he got so many cool castles everywhere as part of keeping order and squashing rebellions. He did deal with a lot of rebellions, but I am getting ahead of myself. Let's talk about this battle. Charlie Stevens says, says short hair discourages hair pulling in battle. Ah, that, 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 could, that is likely it as well. Yes. And, and because of their little male things. That's why it is so absurd in the Rings of Power. We all know what's absurd. Where you see that picture of Galadriel charging in battle with her hair flying everywhere. It's like, no, 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 no. You, you, you want to, you know, not do that. Okay, maybe because she's an elf, whatever, but yeah. It's why St. Joan of Arc cut her hair as well. After William, if anyone succeeded in conquering the English Isles, no. Mm -mm. People have tried. If I'm wrong, please correct me. But yeah, I mean, the, this, the current English succession goes straight down to him. From him, rather. Probably the weirdest one, if from a certain point of view, could be when Henry the Seventh defeated Richard the Third in the War of the Roses, but he was English and of the succession, though oddly, weirdly through the mother's line. But yeah, it wasn't from outside. It also brings an end to the Viking age. The whole the conquering and all that around there with the death of Harald Harada. The Raf people, oh dear. <laughs> Why, hello, Cybots. Great to see you here. We're talking about celebrating 1066 subscribers and the Battle of Hastings. Her uh, Harold had the high ground on this. This is very important. You want to have the high ground. Also, he had this bit, badass shield wall. Not a shield wall of dragons, but a shield wall that William and his peeps could not penetrate. They tried. It didn't work. And then finally, I think after about three, four hours of this, I think it was around one o'clock, the battle kicked off around nine in the morning. It lasted from nine in the morning till six in the evening. So William ordered a fate where he had them on the left flank go up and be like, oh, we're charging. And then, oh my gosh, we've been repulsed. And then it looked like they were having a retreat. So they were like, oh, oh, oh no, we're going to retreat. And Harold's guys on his right flank fell for it. And if I'm using flank wrong, please correct me because I'm stuck in the Civil War. American one. And military history is not my greatest technical knowledge. So, so while they're pretending to run away, ah, help, we're retreating. They charged after him like, ha, 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 we got him. Ha, 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 ha. And they came down from the high ground, which is really stupid. Don't give up the high ground, kids. <laughs> no more Viking. So, story. In the midst of all that chaos, though, William's horse was shot from under him. This is back in the day when the kings actually fought and led the armies, literally. And the horse kind of fell on him, but didn't hurt him. But people thought he was dead. And then they were like, oh my gosh, the king is dead. Because when the king's dead, that's kind of it. And he's like, dudes, I'm not dead. I'm not dead yet. But so 
to encourage people and show them he wasn't dead, he grabbed like the nearest horse, jumped on it, took off his helmet. Is like, look at me. It's me. I'm not dead. Damn it. And they were like, he's not dead. And then I think he put back on his helmet and off he went. And they're, they're sitting there fighting. Now he had some badass cavalry. So just imagine those cruel Norman people being Norman cavalry. So while they're all fighting and all these arrows are going everywhere. Yes, a feigned flight. Only a Saxon deals an absolute insult of a Jedi. Boom! Harold got one right through the eye. In a way, it's kind of cute the way it's shown on this. Like, look, you know, they got their little arrows, little shields. Like, oh, look, there's you know things getting into my um, shield. And as you can see, Harold, oops, right through the eye, and he dies. It is slightly disputed that that's how he died. Some people say he was also kind of hacked up. Uh, I don't know. By your tapestry shows arrow through the eye. And look at the little arrows in his shield. I, I know it shouldn't be cute. But for crying out loud, look at this. All right. So he dies. And then that's it. Yeah, once the king is dead, it's like the whole king of the hill game. He's gone. And the battle goes to William, as does the kingship. He knew he was in a film, so he had to take off his helmet. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, yeah. Well, it's great for a film, and uh, there have been films made. Harold, I have the high ground. William, oh, really? <laughs> you underestimate my power, William. Well played. Well played precisely except the other way around it actually worked there was a little bit of tension like it wasn't just immediately oh I'm the king though it kind of was after the battle William goes off to I think that's the end of my slide oops and my slideshow let me see yeah, it is. Nothing is evil in the beginning. <laughs> That's going to be for my Rings of Power when I actually been watching that straight through. But I, you have to stop every like 30 minutes. It's so horrible. All right. So, yay, he wins. After he wins and yay, I'm king. He goes over to Dover, Canterbury and, you know, kind of burns things down. It's like, haha, I'm the king. Haha, I'm conquering. Haha. And he gets to London. There's a little bit of dispute if there was a siege or how quickly it happened. But to make a very long story short, the dudes in London come out and go, Yay, you are king! And that's it. No one was left, for one thing, but also the powers that be or whatever they had declared him accepted him, he was crowned, and yay, we have what we talked about. All the changes, the Norman customs. And where I say some of this was good, you know, for example, there was still some slavery going on. They, they got rid of that. They weren't having that. Also kind of united, at least, you know, that all of England was a kingdom and eventually, eventually Wales. I don't think it happened during his reign. He had a gazillion kids, five sons. So the succession was fine. Turns out two of his sons will become king. Haha, <laughs> I want to check this one out, if, especially if you've watched Game of Thrones. Or read A Song of Ice and Fire. His... Uh, son William II ascended the throne, and then there was a hunting accident, and his third son attended the throne, and I believe it was Henry, Henry I, wasn't it? Yes. So, <laughs> isn't that interesting? Oops, I need to get back on my glasses. 
And then you can go from the British succession from there. Saibot says, I prefer the AU alternate universe where Harold Harada wins personally. Viking and Omni Kingdom timeline is the best timeline. Steve would approve. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I guess. Though, from another certain point of view, it kind of was because the Duchy of Normandy was from Viking stuff. They ob they obviously had to assimilate, and they had to become Catholics and all of that before they were given it. But that's a whole other story. But yes, you are correct. As far as the good old days... <laughs> Am I right that one could say this was the ultimate Viking invasion? But technically Norman, but uh -huh, accident. Yeah, a lot of people wonder about that. Maybe a little too convenient. All from a certain point of view. It says, Obi-Wan, we don't talk about that, tree. Teresa. That's the Catholic timeline. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> wait, wait, which timeline? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, the Norman or the the Viking or the conversions. Yeah. And at that point though, I think had the, most of the Vikings become Christian too. I think who was it? Who was that one guy that had that happen? That was Olaf. Wasn't it? Oh, well, another story, another day, but definitely the Viking age was pretty much done with this. It's fun. Another good thing is we got all these awesome castles now to go visit thanks to this invasion. Norman and Normal, normal that's arrogant. <laughs> oh, no. No, no, no. And I, I suspect that once he became king, no one dared call him William the Bastard anymore. <laughs> With what hand did you touch me? That, that That's from a total different king and a total different movie. But I, I think that there was no, no little comments about that. He ended up dying, I think, in Normandy because te technically he didn't renounce his duchy thing and one of his sons became Robert became the Duke of Normandy it wasn't till about a century or two later that the Duchy of Normandy came under French rule another long story oh no here we go you see this is where I get confused Hound 3000 says what if Harada beat Harold and he's the one who had to deal with William wouldn't that have been cool? Yeah. I think that William probably still would have beaten him. Because William had one hell of an army. He really did. But that's what, what if... Rather, what makes what if so interesting? If anything, the fact that Harold and Harold, or Harold killed Harold, made my life easier, so I had to quit getting confused between the two names. Salty Traveling Sea is here. Hello, we have 1066 subscribers. Yes, we do, precious. And celebrating uh, 1066 subscribers by talking about this amazing year. So many historically critically events, says Salty Traveling. Within 30 years of this event, Spain and wars, Poland and Eastern Europe. Hell yes, yes. It, 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 when you Google 1066, two Viking kings facing off. Though he was more assimilated, William was, in my opinion. Always, as always, correct me if I'm wrong. William wins, says Saibot, because Harada's army would have been worn down even if they won against Harold. Yeah, they, they would have had that same problem. And very far away. Because remember, these dudes, when they sailed from Norway, that was, that was not a short little trip back then. 
Mm-hmm. Everyone's glad to hear it. Wait, what are we glad to hear about? Oh, doing just fine. Okay, thank you. Yeah, speaking of which, let me go ahead and put this on here because the celebration is for 1066. Um, here we are. Let me make sure. All right. I'm going to share this. Share screen. And if you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe. And for crying out loud, I am crawling toward the last few hours. It's ridiculous. It's like you'll, I call it the witching hour when midnight happens and all of a sudden you like lose some hours from what had happened in the previous 365 days. Love it every time. Precious. Precious, she said the same thing. Shieldwall of Dragon says, plus Harada would most likely be unable to recruit replacements for any losses suffered along the way. Yeah, it would have been tricky because Harold Godwin, he was the he was the most powerful person in in England as, as far as money and power and all that. That's why he even had the nerve to try to claim the throne, being only the brother-in-law of Edward. Yeah, so let's look at some of the fun that was going on in 1066. MLXV1. It was a common year starting on Sunday of the Julian calendar. In Asia, what do they say? Chinese imperial official Sima Guang, I know I mispronounced that, presents the emperor with an eight-volume Tongsi, definitely mispronounced, comprehensive records chronicling Chinese history from 403 to the end of the Qin Dynasty. The Abu Hanifa Mosque is established in Baghdad with the grand vizier of this empire builds a shrine for Abu near his tomb. Well, Europe, well, we just saw this where William is getting his warships. The December 30th, the Granada Massacre, a Muslim mom stores the uh, storms, the Royal Palace in Granada. Oh, this is brutal. Yes. Can I say this out loud? Uh, does a good Friday on a Jewish y- Yusuf and massacres most of the Jewish population. Um, Hui becomes the first town in the Low Countries to be granted city rights by Theoden of Liege. Hedebeam is sacked and burned by the West Slavs. Oh, I should have said it earlier. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Let's see. Oh, wrong button. All right. Count of Anjou is at war with his brother Geoffrey, contesting the lands of Anjou. Man, look at all these people fighting. Magnus II, a son of Harald Harada, is crowned king of Norway. He unites western Norway and northern Norway. So I guess that's a good thing if you're looking at it from the point of view of Norway. Yay, we got united because Harald's dead. We got a lot of stuff from England and... Scotland, but we've already kind of talked about this. And some famous births. We had a Vietnamese emperor born. We had an English nobleman. I don't know why that's even there. Godry of Amiens, French abbot and bishop. Henry the Count of Portugal was born. Byzantine empress was born. A lot of deaths this year. Edward the Confessor. Of course, Harold Harada. King of Norway. Tostig Godwin's son. Harold Godwin's son. And a whole bunch of other people. And last but certainly not least. Dun, dun, dun. The Comet. Haley's Comet. So there we have it while portending all this craziness that was going to occur. 
All righty. Well, that is 1066 and the Battle of Hastings. If this is your first time hearing some of this information, I'm happy to bring it to your attention. I love it. And this kind of history is just so fascinating to me. Lots of cool documentaries and movies on it. Some more historically accurate than others. The fun ones are in French, though, where they're all going like, French, we're speaking in French. Uh, and the, the Tapestry at Bayeux. So if you want to learn more about it, if you haven't heard about it, please go check it out. It's, it's gorgeous. You can see things online. And if you do find yourself in that part of the world, go see it. Absolutely. It is definitely worth it. If this has helped remind you of some of these things, well, that makes me very happy as well. Also, if you're sitting there going, that woman missed this information. Well, let me know in the comments. Let me know in the comments. Jacob's here. Hello. Hello. We're talking 1066 for 1066 subscribers. Yes, we are. And the Battle of Hastings. Good stuff. I'm thinking about something else that happened with the Normans, but we are not touching that because uh, uh, there was also some incursions then from England over to Ireland, which is, oh boy. Uh, yes, congratulations, one step at a time. That's right. That's right. Well, <laughs> I just love 1066 so much and all and the this history so when i saw that i was like yes i've got to i've got to now i just need to get like 15 hours it's ridiculous so please if you all wouldn't mind watching some of my stuff well watch it anyways because i would like to think that uh, some of this is interesting for individuals but e even so i wouldn't mind getting those last hours <laughs> youtube sure does like to bring it down to the wire don't they but um Let's see. Anyone else did I miss? I don't believe I did. Well, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. I've got the thing. Oh my gosh, my cat. It, it, you know that I'm home. No. Cat affairs. Yeah, I think the last thing I said was, oh my gosh, my cat. Yes, my cat just knocked my phone, not my phone, rather my um microphone out of its thing. So I am home. So hopefully though you will be seeing more and more content that Pub Crawl will be resuming as soon as, soon as I get the schedules finalized. I'm going to be in town probably for three weeks. So I'm going to take advantage. Always good to see everyone. And, you know, and visiting and visiting. So have a great day. Oh, wait, before I say have a great day, thank you, everyone that's been in the chat. I know I said so generally, but of course, we have Stephen Ransom. We have Abaldo T. We have Shield Wall of Dragons. Jacob Ironside. We had uh, Rennie popped in, Sidebot. Uh, Hound 3000. We had Salty Traveling Sea. I think I said Abaldo T. Ch Charlie Stevenson. Gorilla's Random Thoughts. We had Deef. If I, oh, Sporking popped in. Taylor Swift. Greater than Disney, Star Wars, and MCU, Dadman Walking 55. If I missed anyone, it was not intentional. Uh, the things pop around and go crazy. Yes, good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Oops, Saturday, lol. Oh, wait, did you say the wrong one? Yeah, we're going to have it. Well, it's a great Sunday, y'all. Well, we can still have a great Sunday. And if you are in Australia, you are going to be having a great Sunday already. So oh, have a great day, everyone. Have a great day. And be certain, be certain, if you are a king, name your successor and don't change your mind.